Hi guys, welcome to Meeple's People Circus. Uh, today we are playing So Long My World by Axis Monday Games. Um, my wife's going to go through the the rules for this. Amy, you all know her. Um, this is going to be the two player multiplayer version of the game. We, I know the solo, you know the multiplayer more than me. So you're going to run through this with... Um, so yeah, I okay, will let so this Amy is... start. This is actually the basic, basic game. We can't get any more basic than this, just to give you a quick run through. Um, how would you pretty much describe the theme of this game? It's, it is, the theme is, it depends, because Solo, the meat theme is slightly different. So on this, it is, the, the, the idea of the game is, um, you, you felt the, the world is ending. Humanity is being wiped out in 12 hours time. And you can choose what you want to do in that last 12 hours of life. You can you can find love, you can create peace. Create peace. You can just wander through just and just sit in a lock yourself in a room, you can go out murder. It's your choice. It's your last 12 hours. Um, in, what would you do if there was no consequences? Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. It, everyone is in the same boat. We all know humanity is gone in 12 hours. There's no explanation. Um, in the solo, it's slightly different. It's you're in a computer system, and the sis the computer is going to wipe humanity. To me, it's a case of this is possibly the same thing, but it just doesn't have the scope for yeah that to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will be doing a solo playthrough just so you guys know. I will be running through the whole campaign of this, <laughs> and um, yeah, that will be future videos. So. Okay, so, um, like you said, in 12 hours, we humanity is going to be wiped out, which is why we have this clock in the middle here, and we have 12 rounds, of which, beginning of each round, we're going to draw an event card. It pretty much just sets up the tone for the hour, and we'll uh, deal out some of these tokens at the top. So, the tokens at the top indicate feelings and they're like the currency of this game. You have to spend feelings to achieve uh, your what are called remnant cards which are what we've got in front of us and we're going to be drawing more throughout the time. Um, so we have a couple of positive feelings. We have hope and nostalgia. Um, so those are the more positive sides of life. We've got a neutral which is resignation, you're just accepting that the end is coming but you're not feeling either way. And then we have the negatives, we have despair and we have madness. So could this end very, very badly here. I think it, I think it does depend on what cards you get drawn at the beginning of the game. I think it honestly does depend on your cards. Because when we played it before, you ended up going down the madness route because that's the cards you started with. I yeah. ended up going down the peace and love and... Yeah. I was, I actually... Which if you're not... I actually gave up tokens for you to mm. bring, carry on the game, that extra rounds, and I was, yeah. Yeah, which if you're not necessarily inclined that way, it can be a little bit, almost psychologically harsh. Yeah, this this game is very, I mean, that some of the events we will be reading and some of the cards we will be reading might... I would say if you're of a sensitive nature, you might want to think twice about watching this video. Yeah, there are there are some. There is a very dark theme. There are some dark cards, um, but that is mm. the start of the game. That is that is the game. Okay, so like I said, at the beginning we're going to draw an event card, and then we're going to place one of our six counters, which correspond to the pictures on these cards. These are the vision cards. And each vision card has a different um, effect um, and a different affinity. So some of these are relating to hope, some of them are madness, some are despair, etc. Um, so we're going to place our choose which tokens we want in private, then we're going to turn it over, put our tokens on whichever card we're going to go on. Um, and then we have the opportunity to play what are called hindrance cards. So hindrance cards are hiding in the remnant deck. The remnant deck, by the way, is uh, just thoughts, feelings, um, flashes of inspiration, anything that's going through your mind during uh, these last your last twelve hours. 
So like I said, if you're drawing mostly madness cards, that is what's going through your mind. Um, you can't really alter that. So again, that's where that yeah. disassociation for me comes from so far. Anyway, um, who knows, I might have a good day. Uh, so, right, um, yeah, so these also have, uh, hindrance cards, and these have got little clocks on them, so they basically allow us to delay the other player so we can get to the cards first, so if we both play the same card and I really wanted something that you might get to, it allows me to just nip in there where we do have a first player. Um, and then we're going to do what's called the vision phase, so first off, uh, we can do the cards effect. Then there's something called the drain effect. So that's effectively a way of taking feelings, etc. So each event card is going to deal feelings out onto these cards. So we can either take up to two feeling tokens off of these cards, or we can take one that matches the affinity of the card. Uh, so there's certain types. So for example, we've got slaughter down here. This will be a madness but you have place of worship up here and that's a hope so you would take one of those um, you could also take one of these marks of soul which I think are more explained in solo game yeah, they, they are in solo they are what unlock your cards in solo your cards lock and you're trying to unlock your visions and marks of soul are what unlocks what, what locks down the vision so you don't lose it once you lose all your visions that's the game over. Yeah, so, so you can. So that's another option that you can do instead of taking the feeling. They're tokens. just points at the end of the game on multiplayer. Uh, on just, multiplayer, yeah, they, just they do you, actually allow you a couple of little extra things, which I'm going to go through. At the second. end, they do. In give a second, you points, they do yeah. turn into points. Yeah, it's one point for every three marks of soul yeah. that you've got. Um, so yeah, so um, the other option you can take instead of taking feeling tokens or etc. So you can also take another one of these remnant cards. Um, we've also got another set of cards over here, which are good gestalt cards. Which are, I'm guessing you're glad that I'm saying instead of you. No, I love saying gestalt. Gestalt cards. It's, it's gestalt is a, I'm um, not saying that word. They are basically remnant cards, but they are more involved remnant cards. Does that kind of make sense yeah. to you? You'll see them as they come out. Yeah. They are worth more points, but they're harder to get. There are the reboot cards <coughs> in that deck. In this deck. No, they're in that deck. Oh, they are in they're this in deck. The yeah, they're in the event yeah. deck. So we have what's a reboot card. Um, so in the solo game where you're part of the computer system, the computer system can't handle it. This is why it makes me think that it does apply to the multiplayer, but it doesn't necessarily bring out any features of that. Yeah. So if the reboot card comes out, the computer system completely frazzles and we just completely reshuffle this deck. But time would still keep going. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, so then we would play any cards that we want to, um, spend any of our Marks of Soul that we have collected. Um, so for Marks of Soul, um, you can declare a positive karma, one of these, so either of these two types. Yeah. A negative karma, one of these two types, and you go through the Gestalt deck until a positive or negative card will come out and then you will keep that card to try and play. Um, you can um, ignore the effect of the reboot card. So the reboot card is always pretty harsh. Yes. So having a mark of soul there to ignore that effect would really be quite handy sometimes. Um, and yeah, like you said, they're worth points at the end of the game as well. And then after all that's done, we take all our tokens back, pass the first player token, um, move the clock forward an hour and we're going to start all over again until there, we hit the 12th hour. There are cards that can jump forwards the clock, there are cards that can take the clock back an hour. Yeah. So there is, yeah, yeah. a lot of things can happen during the game. Um, yeah, so once it hits hour 12, that's it, we cease to exist and then we become a figment of your imagination. Um, and then we mark, count up the cards um, with the points in front of us. So if I, for example, show you a couple of my cards without Jay seeing. So on these cards, 
we have these marks up here which look similar to the marks of soul and these are your insight points and these are going to be stop looking at my card here I'm not, I can't <laughs> see them on that so these are um, what are going to earn you the points at the end of the game um, everybody starts off with two of the same cards um, and in a two player game you just get dealt three extra cards in more, more than that it actually you get dealt three cards each, take one, pass it along until you've all got five cards. But to begin with, you have two cards. Jake can look at these because he's got the same. Um, one is called Life is a Journey, um, and that's a positive card. And you have Soul Box, which is a negative card. Um, and the last piece of setup that we have to do is to take either a hope or a madness token and that will kind of give each other the hint which way we're going to start to go. You kind of have to look at your cards, what you've got in your hand yeah. and, and go by go by that. You can go mad and then, then find peace. So there you, is, can. You, you, can, you can decide, Do you know what, I'm going to go mad and then slowly go peaceful. You, you can, just, you just however, have... at the end game scoring so on top of these insight points that you've got on your cards, you've also got um, the Marks of Soul, which will get you extra points. If you play exclusively one type of what they call karma, so either exclusively positive, exclusively negative, for each karma of that type, you get an extra point. So it can be quite a good strategy uh, um, just to stick with one type of karma. But I'm guessing neutral, you can get away with playing neutral because you can get some with negative, neutral on that ne one, yeah. negatives, some negative cards have neutral, some positive cards have neutral, so it's the, yeah. Yeah, some, some cards you've got a mix of both, which you have to weigh up the amount of positive negatives to work out which way that card would go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want to start as first player today? Yeah. So, um, did you want to just talk through these vision cards that we have in front of us? So, in front of us we have, we start from the place, place of worship. So, um, so the flavour text is, please, at least in the final moments, answer me. So, once we may pay a resignation and gain one positive feeling of our choice. Here we have childhood home and it says... Time robs us of all, even of memory. Um, you may pay the cost of a remnant card currently in the discard pile to add it to your hand or to play it. Then here we have special person. Love is giving something you don't have to someone who doesn't want it. Which is actually a nostalgia card. Um, choose another player to exchange one feeling of the same karma with. Um, then down here we have Slaughter. Only violence can save this world. You may move one feeling of your choice from an adjacent vision to this vision. So that's a good mess people over one. Yeah. Then there's a card, you love it's this my, artwork. I, I actually, you love this I artwork. I still have this, this artwork as my screensaver on my phone. I've had it since, I think, early part of the Kickstarter and I love this artwork. Uh, this is Death Drive. The purpose of all life is death. You may remove a remnant card to receive a feeling that is shown in the cost of that card. And uh, lastly, which I quite like, yeah. the World's Edge Pub. Join the dance, follow on, till the grail sun hits the mould. Oh sorry, till the grail sun sets in the mould. And that lets you discard a card. And discard a card, and you can draw one. Oh yeah, you get to draw a new one. You can imagine this being like some sort of um, movie by Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg. You can imagine <laughs> an end of the world. Yeah. He has he has got the world's end movie. Yeah, but this but is world's edge. Alien. Yeah, so you can imagine. So my head, uh, I automatically go. You, you can imagine a Simon Pegg movie. At the end of the world, they're all going to a pub because I think all of his movies, all of his like his trilogy of movies, he does go to pubs. Why not? It's yeah. 